Today, we're gonna to take a look at Session, which is a messaging application that has the potential to be the next big private free software communications app. So this app is actually a fork of Signal, which I'm sure most of you have heard of. Uh, Signal is basically treated as the current gold standard of private messaging applications, but Session makes some very important improvements to the Signal protocol. So Session is end-to-end -end encrypted, just like Signal, but Session also tries to hide the identity of the two people who are communicating. Because remember, with end-to-end -end encryption, that's just hiding the contents of the conversation. Any data that's passing through can't really be inspected, like someone can't necessarily figure out what you guys are talking about, but you can see who is talking to who and when they are talking. And this metadata is actually the primary thing that is collected by governments because believe it or not, most of the web is encrypted, like even with HTTPS, right? Most of the web is encrypted, so you usually can't see the data going back and forth, but you can see who connects to who. And if you can see that, as well as when they're talking and how frequently they're talking, you get a lot of insight into what is actually going on when you collect that metadata, especially on a large scale. Like, for example, if an IP address or a phone number is really only sending text or calls to a bunch of other IPs and phones that they normally don't talk to, but they're just sending it at a specific time of year, like say during holiday, you can probably infer that these are distant friends or family members that are wishing each other Merry Christmas and maybe taking pictures of the dinner that they made. Uh, you can figure that out just because of the context of the conversation, uh, even though you don't have the content of the conversation. So Session applies this metadata reduction in a number of ways. First of all, there's no phone number that is required to set up Session. And that's probably the biggest thing that I know concerns a lot of Signal users. That's usually the main criticism that I see of Signal is it requires you to give a phone number to sign up, which uniquely identifies you unless you use either a burner phone or you use one of those online texting services to get like a temporary uh, phone number. So no worries of that when using Session. And you also are sending messages through an Onion router, which eliminates the central servers that Signal has, which really is a, a central point of failure, right? Like those servers that Signal's using to actually send messages back and forth could be compromised. Um, I don't know if they would necessarily be able to see the contents of the messages because it's end-to-end -end encrypted, so they wouldn't be able to get that, but you could uh, implement a denial of service attack by shutting down those servers. So Session uses onion routing for the traffic, uh, which is probably one of the best ways to remain anonymous. It's the same idea behind Tor. So you have three or more hops. Each one is using another layer of encryption and each hop only knows about the server that it received information from and then the server that it's sending it to. So by the second hop, your IP address of your phone or your computer or whatever is no longer known because that second hop is just seeing the IP of the first hop. And by the third hop, which would be the exit node, the entry node that you connected to isn't even known. It just sees the IP of that second node. So this makes it really hard to track who is communicating with who unless you actually control a large number of nodes that are involved in the network and you're timing when packets come in and when packets come out of the entry and exit nodes. Uh, but even then, you would only really have about as much information as someone who's monitoring a fully encrypted channel because the encryption is still gonna be in place, so you're just collecting metadata at that point. Now, currently, Session is using the Onion request to provide the anonymity, but there is a plan to move to a, uh, what is it called, the Loki net, the Loki network in the future. Uh, so this is going to provide some advantages over Tor. Uh, Tor allows you to tunnel TCP IP, which is working at the transport layer or layer four of the OSI model, but Loki net actually works at layer three. So it should be able to do everything that Tor does with TCP IP connections, but also do things like anonymous tunneling over IP, so essentially an anonymous VPN, 
uh, anonymous UDP. And that's a really big deal for any type of real-time communications. Uh, DNS also uses UDP. Anything else that's gonna use UDP. Uh, and basically just a quick explanation between TCP and UDP. So uh, anything that needs really high bandwidth but doesn't need super high transfer integrity, like if you're doing FaceTime, for example, it's not as necessary for every single packet to arrive safe and sound and in the correct order like you would need with file transfers because obviously if a file gets out of order, it's going to be corrupted. So uh, if, you, if it's okay to drop packets, like if it's okay to have sort of a lossy communication, um, which is how you get the robotic voice and stuttering and stuff like that in FaceTime, then you want to use UDP. Uh, so the Loki net is also structured with a proof of work system, which makes Sybil attacks much more difficult. Now, these are a whole category of attacks that can be done and actually have been done on networks like Tor. Uh, I don't know if I2P has had a massive Sybil attack yet, but it could happen. Uh, so when you own a significant portion of nodes that are on the network, you can, of course, start to de-anonymize users like we talked about earlier. You can see all the hops that packets are going through. Uh, but you can also do denial of service attacks against services that exist on those networks and all sorts of other nasty stuff through collusion of the different nodes. On LokiNet, it would be very expensive to actually own and operate a majority of the nodes uh, because of the, the blockchain that they have in place there. There's actually a YouTube channel for uh, Loki Network. So there's a bunch of videos on here with different conferences that they've done over the years. I think they have about two years of content on here. Uh, so yeah, you should definitely check out these videos if you really want a like in-depth technical detail about how the Loki Network works. Now, as far as the downsides to Session Go, uh, like I said, they're not actually using the Loki network just yet. They're still using the Onion request. Um, so currently Session doesn't support calls. It doesn't support video or any of those other UDP connections that I talked about. Um, there's also a very, very high, or not high, but a very low uh, file size limitation to Session. So. This is where I was testing it earlier. Um, you can send, obviously short messages are fine. You can send pictures as long as they're not too big. I think the file size limitation is about five megabytes. So uh, normal pictures will probably work if they're like JPEGs and they're not crazy high resolutions. You can send voice recordings, but they can only be about one minute long. That's sort of the cap that it gave me where it automatically cuts it off. Um, you can send, again, longer text messages. I think these are around, I know they're over 1,000 or 2,000 characters. I think this one gets up to three maybe. Um, so yeah, you've got that. Again, pictures, you can do collections of pictures. Video is pretty much non-existent. Like this is about the largest file size for a video I could create uh, to make sure it's under five megs. So yeah, two seconds, video is basically a no-go. Another thing which is, I guess not really a downside because it's pretty much necessary for this app to be as anonymous as possible, but the way that IDs are set up. Uh, so like I said, you don't give a phone number, you don't give an email, you just automatically get a session ID generated, which as you can see is just a long uh, alphanumeric code and then you can also get a QR code for it to scan. So. This could be a little bit confusing to people that are new to anything really privacy related. Obviously, if you've been working with cryptocurrencies, then this shouldn't be anything new to you because this is kind of the same idea as a wallet ID. Uh, but yeah, this, this could confuse people because it's not like an email or a phone number that you're giving people. Uh, I could picture this being a little bit difficult. Uh, like if someone's going to enter it manually, there's a good chance that they're going to screw it up. Uh, it would probably just be recommended to send the QR code to people. Um, I think most people out there kind of know how to work a QR code. Uh, so yeah, that's that's one potential downside. Uh, but with all of these constraints, I don't really think Session is going to be quite ready for mass use yet. But you know, certainly the file, the 
the file limitations, things like that, uh, and the fact that you can't really do voice over it definitely means that it's not meant for a daily driver just yet. But I do think it's gonna be an interesting application to keep an eye on, uh, as well as the Loki network in general, since that's probably going to be used by many more anonymous services in the future.